high res shot is an excellent feature in an Olympus camera. It can give you more megapixels if you need them. But there is also another solution. There is a software from Topaz Labs called Gigapixel AI. And I was uh, wondering how does that compare to Olympus high res images. I've been using Gigapixel AI every now and then. But now I just realized that why not put it against Olympus high res shot. So comparing Gigapixel AI and Olympus high res shot coming up. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about the Gigapixel AI and Olympus Hyder shot, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and this time about Gigapixel AI and Olympus Hyder shot. But let's start. There are two ways of making Hyder shots with Olympus cameras. The first one is the traditional way, you put your camera on a tripod and set your camera to high res shot. But with EM1 Mark III and EM1X you also have a second option and that is handheld high res shot. It gives you a bit smaller image but it's a handy way because you don't need a tripod. And here's a list of Olympus cameras that have the high res shot feature. As I said, high res shot is a very good way of getting some extra megapixels to your images. I very seldom need those extra megapixels, but to be honest, it's a really great feature to have for those cases that you need them. I've used it for product shots mainly. And as I said, the other way is Topaz Gigapixel AI. And before we can make the comparison, let's go out and make a few images for the Gigapixel AI to scale. Okay, here we are. You might recognize this place if you have watched my uh, EM10 uh, Mark IV panorama shot or panorama mode image. It's the same place. I, I just like the scenery and I think this would be a great shot for that gigapixel versus Olympus high res shot battle. I need to take two shots. I will take the handheld high res shot, then I will take the normal 20 megapixel shot, then I will just in case also make a 80 megapixel tripod high res shot and compare those and see is it worth of using gigapixel or should you use the high res mode on your Olympus camera. It's going to be really interesting because I made some preliminary tests on gigapixel and it it was quite good. It was quite good but let's see how it works with this and uh, first I will take those images and then we'll go back to my office and see from the computer how the test came out. Okay, let's start making the first image. Okay, first I will... Uh, I have my tripod, let's put it over there. And uh, let's take the camera out. What I'm using is the EM1 Mark III because it has handheld high res shot. And the first image I will take the normal, the regular image. I forget to say that I'm using the 25 millimeter f2.2 f1 lens. That's the way I can get the best possible image quality. And of course, I will make raw images. All three will be raw images. But let's start with the regular 20 megapixel image. And I think I have it all set. Aperture priority F4. And let's see what the shutter speed is. Most likely it will be at ISO 200 fast enough so I can get really sharp and crispy images. But let's grab the first one. Yeah, and let's... Uh Let's increase the shutter speed a bit, make it a bit longer. One third stop longer. And there we go. Now we have the reference image that we will be uh, upscaling with Gigapixel AI. And compare it to the next two images I'm going to make. First one is going to be the handheld high res shot and then I will use my, well it's right over here. I will use my tripod for, for the uh, uh, tripod uh, high, uh, high res shot. Let's uh, switch the camera to uh, a higher shot. Here we go, and let's choose handheld. All right, now we have about a 50 megapixel version of the higher shot. Let's try to make the same uh, 
composition. It's not really hard. And it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly the same, but let's see how we can do this. All right, I think now it's making it. When you're using handheld high res shot, it actually uses your camera movement to grab the images. I think it's a very genius way of uh, um, making the handheld high res shot. Okay, now it's done. Let me check that it's, it is sharp. It looks to be really sharp. And now I will take the tripod and start making that image. And let's see how that goes. I do have a couple of second delay before it starts making the image. That way I can avoid the camera shake. I think we're done. We can go back to my office and see how those images came out and see which one is better. Higher shot or up, up scaled with gigapixel AI. Let's go. Okay, now we have all the images. We have the 20 megapixel a normal image, then we have the uh, 50 megapixel handheld high res shot, and then we have the 80 megapixel uh, tripod handheld, uh, tripod handheld, tripod high res shot. And the next thing we need to do is to use Gigapixel AI and upscale the 20 megapixel image to match the 50 megapixel image and the 80 megapixel image. And uh, this is not a tutorial of Gigapixel AI, but I will walk through a, a few of the steps that you need to do. Gigapixel AI is a software from Topaz Labs. And I've uh, uh, used Topaz Labs software before. The software that I use the most is the, the Denoise AI. And I do have a video about that and you might watch it from there. There are two ways to bring the images to Gigapixel AI. You can just drag them or open them on, or you can use it as a plugin for Photoshop. Gigapixel AI does not work as a plugin for Lightroom, which is a pity. I think it would be great if it was. But to my knowledge, it does not work with Lightroom. But on the other hand, it can open Olympus RAW files, and we will use that. So these images have not been uh, retouched at all, so we can compare the raw data image to the final image that comes out of Gigapixel AI, which I think is, is a fair comparison. We can, of course, do some uh, image editing in Photoshop. The way I, I would do it first to make some uh, adjustment in Lightroom, then uh, open it in Photoshop and then open it for, uh, to Gigapixel AI from there. Well, it's a bit of a hassle as a workflow, but that works. But uh, what I've used it so that I've opened it up straight in, in Gigapixel AI. I think that's the fastest way. I have not bought Gigapixel AI yet, so my is a trial version. It works for 30 days and there are no watermarks or anything else. You can use it as a full software, so, so it is easy to test for real. So no uh, limitations with the trial version for, for 30 days. After that, of course, you need to buy it if you want to use it again or keep on using it. Okay, now I have the 20 megapixel image in Gigapixel AI. And the best way to match the 50 megapixel image is just to write the width of the image, which was 8160 pixels. The uh, handheld high shot uh, pixels may vary a bit because it uses your hand's movement to make the, the uh, Com composite image, actually stitching the image together in camera. But this time it came out 8160 megapixel, megapixel pixels. And uh, I will set this to the width of the image and then let Gigapixel AI do its magic. Once we're finished with this, then we can set the width of the tripod handheld shot, which was 10360 pixels wide. And after that's done, then we have all the images that we need. We do have the ones that I took outdoors, the uh, handheld high res shot and the uh, tripod handheld shot. <laughs> I keep saying that uh, tripod high res shot. And we will compare these to the ones that were made with Gigapixel AI. This is going to be interesting to see, is there any difference? And if there is, which one is better? If we look at all these images, the difference is not visible like this. But when we take the images to a 
or we show them at 100%, you might see a bit of a difference. The Olympus high-res shot is a bit sharper when we compare it to the handheld high-res shot. There is small, small difference, but the difference isn't really big. As you can see, the Olympus image is a bit more contrasty, so there's less contrast in the gigapixel image. And that, of course, can be fixed if you want to have the same, uh, what do you call the contrast, no problem. You just add contrast to the gigapixel TIFF file. Yeah, I did not mention it. It's a TIFF file. What's really interesting in this that the difference isn't really, really big. And as you can see from a moving subject, the gigapixel AI, of course, is better because it's made from one still image and the high res shot is made from several images. But the handheld high res shot is just a tiny bit sharper but the difference isn't really big. But what about the tripod high res shot? I got it right this time, first time. There is the same result. The Olympus image is just a tiny bit sharper. But if we look at in the, to the corner of this image, then actually the gigapixel AI image is a bit sharper in the corners, which is interesting because it, this way you can actually make a bit sharper image with gigapixel AI and that the same thing worked with the with what do you call the the handheld high-res shot I checked it after after I realized that the corners are a bit sharper with gigapixel AI otherwise the image in overall is a bit sharper from in the middle but the corners make up that gigapixel AI is pretty good now if we look at the flag here that's a big difference and this is an advantage of, of Gigapixel AI that it makes the image from one image and Olympus high res shot is made out of several images. So what are my conclusions on here? I would say that if you want sharper image, use the Olympus, a uh, <laughs> Olympus AI. Yeah, it's, in a way it is AI, but the Olympus uh, high res shot, either handheld or tripod. It will give you a bit better result, but the difference is not that big. And then, of course, if you have a lot of moving subjects, then the high res shot from Olympus camera is not the way to go. Then you need to use Gigapixel AI if you really want those huge amount of megapixels. So this was actually a really interesting test. And if you're interested in other Topaz Lab softwares like the Denoise AI, there is a video about that over here, which you might want to watch. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.